Paper or plastic? Today we're going to look at plastic. Now today we're going to look at something very common, and it should be very common because there are 500 billion to 1 trillion of these bags used a year worldwide. And they are really what they call single-use bags. These were designed back in the 1950s, started really heavy use in the 60s, but in the 1980s, mid-80s, these really kind of took over. And um, I remember the transition myself when we had paper, and then you'd say paper or plastic. And so now we've gone pretty much to plastic. But because there's so many of these and we use them on an everyday basis to line trash cans, uh, to pick up things, to carry groceries, and all the little things that we do, there are a lot of survival uses and ways to recycle this uh, for your use in a SHTF situation. So we're going to continue our series on using everyday items in survival situations, and we're going to be using the plastic shopping bag. One thing about the plastic bag is pretty strong. It's got a 10-pound weight here. I'm going to drop it in. You can see that it holds up well. One of the great things though is to double bag and that's definitely something especially when you have milk or something like that. You guys are used to that. Uh, one of the things though it does put a lot of strain right here and we've all seen where these bags can just rip and things fall out. Now we're going to try 20 pounds. <laughs> one bag that holds it. That's pretty impressive. Now there are a lot of bags that will hold water. Uh, I've, I know a lot of these have holes in them. I mean, I've seen the little picks. Uh, they can get picked and open very easily, but we're just going to go ahead and test this one out. It looked like it didn't have holes. And I think that this one will probably hold water. Uh, but I really wouldn't trust it, but in an emergency, you know, where you needed to get water somewhere, um, you know, finding one, picking out one that didn't leak is a good, or at least some kind of option. If you have extra gear, you can take and put it in your bag, run it through some of your tie-downs on your bag, and secure it. That way you're carrying it if you don't have room in your bag. Now, if you're really cold and you have a source of these bags, you can actually stuff them into your clothing and this is going to give you a little bit of uh, insulation you can spread them out some if you want but the thicker they are the more they're going to insulate if you have some kind of electronics or something you, you really want to protect and not get wet uh, even though these bags are typically uh, pretty water resistant take your trash bag it's not going to make it waterproof but it's definitely going to help wrap it up really good Tuck it back in your bag, less to have to worry about. When you're camping or definitely in an SHTF situation and you have food in your bug out uh, and you want to protect it from predators while you sleep at night, take your food, slip it in one of the shopping bags. Here we have some cordage. Now this will get it off the ground, it'll get it away from a lot of the predators, and of course the higher up you get the better. And guys, I know from experience, one night we had a raccoon to get in our tent because some moron left donuts in the tent. <laughs> Tore up the tent. An ice storm's coming. Get it around your mirror, and the next morning you'll be good to go. Take ice, put it in your bag, wrap it up good, and use it as an ice pack in case you get bumped or bruised. To protect your knees, of course, <laughs> if you have large legs, this may not work, but it'll keep your knees from getting wet if you're kneeling down on the ground, which I do a lot when I pick up brass. And speaking of which, 
being able to grab collectibles, things you need to hold without, you can't really hold in your hands. This is a great way to store things and carry them. Now having a wound, no matter how small or large, uh, being able to protect that from the elements if you're in a bug out situation or just at home without professional medical attention uh, is important to keep it dry and we can protect it from not only dry but also from the elements. Uh, we can wrap it around our hand, we can wrap it around this way and tie it off and still give us our hand use. Uh, or whatever part of your body. Uh, also, if you have a cast, you can wrap this if you need to take a shower or if you're out uh, to protect that cast. But for medical, there's a lot of ways this is used to protect those wounds. Take your pillowcase, stuff it with these bags. You have an improvised pillow. At least give you some comfort. If you have enough bags, you can do this for a mattress or just use a sack of bags. You can lay these out on the ground and then at least keep you out of the wet and the cold. And this should insulate a little bit. Uh, it's not the best, but it's definitely better than just the hard ground. Wet clothes, whether they're spills or you're just in the rain or they're just wet for whatever reason, uh, taking one of the shopping plastic bags, slide it in, keeps it contained, and um, I'm sure we've all used these before. Now one of my favorites is emergency toilet paper. <laughs> uh, you want to go with a brown bag for sure. and. Uh, Guys, I think I'd rather use leaves. <laughs> Driving, especially traveling, always seems to be trash. You know, you don't want to throw it out the window. And of course, taking a trash bag, keep things real tidy. You can either leave this in your car, and when you get home, throw it in a big trash can. Of course, who hasn't used these for trash can liners? <laughs> also, keeping a bag in your car, especially for those that get motion sickness, with little small children, gives you a barf bag. I would suggest putting a paper bag over this but we don't have any paper bags because we chose plastic over paper. Now, if you have a tarp with eyelets or any way to attach it, you can slide a bag through and attach it and use it as a tie down. It's got enough strength where it should be able to hold this. Now there are laws if you have things that extend outside of your vehicle to be able to have a warning flag. And a lot of times those just aren't available. Uh, taking a bag at least like this making sure it's good and secure because you don't want it to come off and then get a ticket for littering too. <laughs> that way the wind will catch this and uh, it'll at least be something to warn people if they get too close. Now if you're in wet climates and your shoes are not really that water resistant, take your bag, wrap it around, tie it up in the back, and you have some protection. Uh, but one other thing to do with this same setup is if you're in the house and your shoes are dirty and you want to walk through the house but you don't want to unlace your shoes, you can wrap them up in bags and walk across the carpet. That's what I have to do when I'm at home. <laughs> These can also be used for improvised socks. If your socks get wet, slide these over. It's going to keep your feet somewhat insulated. Throw your shoe on. You can tie this up. Your feet are very important in an emergency situation. Of course, they're important every day. Let's say you're going on a trip and you need to pack some shoes that aren't that clean, or even if they are, you don't want to put them in with your clothes. Grab you a couple of plastic bags. Just wrap up your boot or your shoes. And you'll protect the rest of your stuff. Then just close it up. Now, whether you're applying wax, paste, or polish, you can use this as a glove to help protect. This is a little bit of silicone, and I'm putting it on the O-ring on this little flashlight. But if you need to polish your shoes, if you need to apply saddle soap, whatever, this makes a good throwaway rag or glove. Now, if you run across something that's a mess and you don't have really any way to protect your hands, maybe it's just a, a hazard, maybe it's just messy. Take the bag, slide it over your hand, tuck it into your sleeve. Doesn't give you a lot of dexterity, but you can grab. Two, if you need to, these would keep your hands warm. It would give you some insulation from the wind, uh, and they're very stylish. Now, a lot of people have really been creative in using these, whether it's pocketbooks, sandals, uh, you know, small rugs, and one of the best I've seen is a sleeping mat for homeless. 
and there's a group that makes these they put them together it's pretty cool and uh, they roll right up they have a tie together and this really gives them some uh, cushion when they're out better than sleeping on the pavement or cardboard there's a video about that and I'm gonna leave the link down below because it's really cool they crochet these together and uh, just a really creative idea cut your handles make this into an improvised rain bonnet I'm not gonna win any beauty contest with this but I wasn't gonna win any beauty contest anyway <laughs> You can even put your hat over here, keep the rain off your head. Now if you have pipes or a faucet and there's gaps in between, uh, this is a great way to, to fill that in, to stuff it. Uh, I would show that, but all mine have that foam filling. We put it in there to keep out rodents and things, but this is a good way to do it. Uh, also the old traditional, if you have a dog carrying this around in case the dog you know, has to go to the bathroom and you can pick up doggy poop. Um, also, like for luggage, some people, you know, you don't have luggage, you just stick them in bags, or if there's certain extra things that you're carrying, a bag's great. But guys, honestly, it's endless what you can do with a plastic bag. And down in the comments below, if you have a really cool creative idea, please leave it down below. We like to read those comments. It gives us ideas to, to use in a survival situation or in just life hacks. If you don't have something on hand, you know, improvise. And it's a great way to do it. Spend less money and uh, you're recycling in a sense. Now once these bags really start to mount up, you can take these and recycle them. And that's a great way, take them to recycle centers, they can reuse these. But having a stock of these around is just a great idea. And when there's nothing else, sometimes the plastic bag can be improvised for a lot of different uses. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. So we're going to continue our. So we're going to. So we're going. To, <laughs> now, one thing that I thought was pretty ingenious was making sleeping mats. Um, no, no. One of the, some of the. Now, some of the uses. Now, some people have really gone to the extreme with using toilet paper. Yeah, I don't think so. 